Okay, so as promised, here is my video on the shunting yard algorithm. So get on your train driver's cap, whoop whoop, let's have a look at it. Okay, so the shunting yard algorithm, how to convert from infix to postfix notations. Now, I hope you watched my previous video on uh, reverse Polish notation. This is the second video of two videos about postfix. In the previous video, I explained what postfix or reverse Polish notation was, uh, and I showed you how to write code to evaluate uh, postfix expressions. Now, if you haven't watched that video, you should really go back and watch it now because it's really kind of like obligatory to understand this video, unless of course you understand what um, reverse Polish is and you've got no problem with that. But if you haven't seen it, go and watch that now. We'll wait for you here, don't worry. We'll wait till you get back, don't worry. Okay, now that everyone's caught up, let's carry on. So the shunting yard algorithm was invented by Dijkstra and it's a way to convert from infix, for example, one plus two times three to postfix, one, two, three times plus. And as I said, I covered all that uh, in the previous video. It's called the shunting yard algorithm because it uses two stacks to do the conversion and can be thought of as a train yard where there are two tracks to carry the carriages and they're shunted from one track to the other. And in this case, the numbers and the symbols are shunted from one track to another. In fact, it's two stacks. So the two stacks are the output stack and the operator stack. And in essence, all the numbers go directly to the output stack and the operators go onto the operator stack. And then under certain conditions, then things from the operator stack are also put onto the output stack. The best way to explain is with a demo. Okay, so here we're going to analyze one plus two uh, and convert that to postfix. So we've got our two stacks here, output and operators. And the first thing you do is push the one straight to the output stack. Okay, then you push the plus sign onto the operator stack. Then the next thing in the expression is the two. So you push that onto the output stack. And now at the end of the expression, we pop everything off of the output stack. So now you get one, two plus. That's a pretty simple example, but that shows you the essence of how it works. And also the simplicity of it, because it works in such a way that you get the right postfix expression and there isn't really much complicated stuff there. It's a very clever algorithm that uh, Dijkstra invented. Okay, let's try another one. One plus two times three. So we push the one onto the output stack. We push the plus onto the operator stack. We push the two onto the output stack. Now we come to this multiply sign. So you push the multiply to the operators if it has a greater precedence than the top operator on the stack. And I dealt with the order of operators in the previous video. So in this case, we know that we have to put the uh, multiply on the stack because it has a greater precedence than, uh, than the plus sign. Then we put the three onto the output stack. And now we've reached the end of our expression. So we pop everything off. Now remember we're popping. So out comes the multiply first and then comes the plus. And that gives us one, two, three, multiply plus, which is absolutely correct. Now let's look at one plus two minus three, because here minus and plus are gonna be of the same precedence in the order of operators. Now I've picked it up halfway through. We've got the one and the two on the output stack already. We've got the plus on the operator stack. Now because minus doesn't have a higher precedence, we pop the plus off the stack. Okay, and that's now one, two plus, and then we push the minus back onto the operator stack. Now that's different when we did it with multiply. So now you can see here how that plus has made its way onto the stack, not at the very end. And it's done that because we know the minus uh, is not of a higher precedence. And then we put the three on the stack. Now we've reached the end of the expression. So we pop off the rest of the operators and you get one, two plus three minus. And uh, if you were to evaluate that, well, one, two plus gives you three. 3 minus gives you 0, and that is the correct answer. Okay, now the tricky one is when you have some parentheses, brackets, uh, as I often call them. So let's go through that. So the first thing we do is to push the opening uh, bracket, opening parentheses, onto the operator stack. Then we push the 1 onto the output stack, push the plus onto the operator stack, push the 2 onto the output stack. Now we've got a closing bracket. So what you do is you empty the stack down to and including the opening bracket, but you discard the opening bracket because there are obviously going to be no brackets in the postfix uh, expression. So therefore that will means we put the plus onto the output stack 
and we've got rid of all the brackets, they're not there now. Then we put the multiply in, the three, pop off the multiply, and there you have it, one, two, plus, three, multiply. Now, as I, what I've done is I've written some code. Here is a Python script that will convert infix to pof6 using the shunting uh, yard algorithm. You can see it's pretty simple. This is basically the function that you need. So it goes in, it says if it's a number, then you pop it on the output stack. And it deals here with the brackets, as we've said. It deals with the order of precedence here. And it just basically pops things on and off the right stacks according to the, the very thing we've just discussed. So if you look through the code, it's very, very simple. Just a couple of if statements to work out what it should do next. And then the while loops here are, of course, because you're emptying stacks. You need to keep doing it until you reach a certain condition. You can get hold of this code in my GitHub repository. And there is the uh, link to it. Okay, so now it's demo time. Let's run that Python script so you can see how it runs. Okay, so here we are on the command line. I'm going to run that uh, program as we've discussed. And so with this one, it's not got any tokenization, so we have to do it with spaces. But if we do one plus two times three, then you can see here it takes the one, puts it on the output stack, takes the plus, puts it on the operator stack, takes the two, puts it on the output stack takes the multiplier sign, puts that on the output stack because it has a higher precedence than the plus that's already there, takes the three, puts that on the output stack, empties the stack, so you get one, two, three, star plus. Let's do one with brackets, shall we? So let's do bracket one plus two uh, times by three. So we can see it takes the bracket, puts that on the operator stack, one plus two, Finally, when it gets to the bracket here, it then uh, empties the stack. So you now get this one, two plus uh, onto the output stack. Multiply goes onto the operator stack, three, and then finally empties, you get one, two plus three star. Now, as I promised in the previous video, what I've done now is I've combined the postfix evaluation, the conversion from infix to postfix, put it all in a little program called calc.python.py. And basically, it's also got a tokenizer, so you don't have to put all those spaces anymore. You can type in uh, a piece of maths, it will convert it to postfix, evaluate the postfix, and then give you the, uh, the answer. And as you can see here, look at this, look, it basically says postfix calls this infix to postfix expression um, function, gives us the postfix, then we evaluate the postfix as we did in the first video, and then print it out. This other stuff here is that you can run this just like you can run the basic calculator, BC command in Linux. If you provide it with an argument, it will calculate it and exit. If you just uh, run it, then you can type things in, and it will just keep looping around. You type things in, give you the answer, type something in, give you the answer until you quit out of it. That's also in my GitHub repository in the same place. Let me just show you it running. Okay, so let's run the calculator program, which does everything. Uh, as I said, if you just run it like this, you can do one plus two. It's got a it's got a tokenizer in it as well, so it doesn't need all the space. One times uh, one plus two times three is seven. Why is that? Two times three is six plus one is seven. So that's the correct way of doing it. Let's, we could do it with brackets if we wanted to. One plus two times by three gives us nine. That's the correct way of doing it there. Uh, and we could do one plus two. Uh, minus three, which gives you zero, because one plus two is three, minus three is zero, and so on. We could do lots and lots of brackets, you know, bracket, bracket, one plus two, multiplied by three, close bracket, multiplied by four, and it just works it all out. So there you go. Now, if you call it with an expression, you can actually do that. We can have here one plus two times by three, and it actually gives us seven, and then exits the program. So you can use it in both ways. As I said, all the code in my GitHub repository. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.